It's time for a Smarty Bit. Little Bitty Bits of Smart. If you have a bunch of systems connected to Home Assistant, then you'll probably want notifications when there's something that needs your attention. And if you're like us, and those systems are installed in a vehicle, and you may not always have internet access, then it's important that those notifications can be local push notifications. Lucky for us, Home Assistant supports local push notifications as long as you're connected to your server using an internal address. That means your server and your device, like your phone, tablet, or computer, are on the same network. And you can use the MDS name, like homeassistant.local, or the IP address of your Home Assistant server. Home Assistant also supports connecting to your server externally, using something like Nabucasa Home Assistant Cloud, Cloudflare, or Tailscale, for instance. If you're connected to your server externally, then you can use push notifications through Apple's or Google's servers, and that'll work just fine. But if you're out somewhere remote and you don't have internet access to your server, then it's important that you're connecting to your server using the internal address so that you can receive local push notifications. Luckily, Home Assistant manages this for us as long as you've provided an internal and an external address in your native app for iOS, Android, or your computer. And I'll dig into that app in just a little bit. There are a lot of things you might want notifications for from your Home Assistant server, like when a person is detected on your cameras, or when the level of your water tank is low. But today I'm gonna to use an inverter as an example. We have the Victron MultiPlus 3000 VA inverter, and that yields about 2400 watts of usable power. Sometimes when we're using our air fryer and our induction cooktop, it's easy to get carried away and push the inverter past its limits. We do have a gauge on our dashboard that's pretty visible from the kitchen, but sometimes we're not paying attention and you turn that induction cooktop up too high while you're using the air fryer and suddenly we're pushing the capabilities of the inverter. So we have a notification setup that sends notifications to our phone via the local push notification service. We also have those notifications set to be critical, so they work even if we're in do not disturb. These kinds of notifications could be used for anything, not just inverter overload, but we're going to use that as an example here today. All right, let's dig into how that's set up. Before we go any further, I want to say a quick thanks to the wonderful Soft Goods for sponsoring this Smarty Bit episode. You might have noticed I shoot every Smarty Van video in front of this window, and it's always covered with a wonderful window cover. We actually have eight of those covers in the van, and they help control the temperature in the van as well as regulate light. I also love him for shooting videos because I can shoot any time of day. If you take a look behind the scene, you can see I'm using four of them back here to control the light. Without them, it would look like this. Ah, and that's not so good for shooting videos, so I like to use the window covers to help control the light. Ah, that's better. I even have a scene that helps set up the lighting just right for shooting the YouTube videos. So while we didn't buy the window covers with YouTube videos in mind, they sure do come in handy. We love the wonderful soft goods and they make a whole range of products. I think you'll love them. Check out the link down below in the description. All right, let's take a look at how to set up an automation that can send you a notification, whether you're connected locally or externally to your Home Assistant server. We're using our Victron inverter as the example here, and we need some kind of sensor to trigger our automation. If you haven't seen the video I made about connecting your Victron servo to Home Assistant using MQTT, you can watch that here. One of the sensors we set up is the inverter overload alarm, and you can see that sensor here. It has a value template of either no alarm, warning, alarm, or no data. So we're gonna use that text sensor to trigger our automation. All right, so let's take a look at how to set up the automation for this. I'm gonna head over to our Home Assistant install and go into automations, and we're gonna create a new automation. So we need something to trigger this automation. And we're gonna use that sensor we just talked about called Servo GX Inverter Overload Alarm. And I'm gonna set the two to warning. And so that way, when the alarm changes to warning, it'll trigger this automation. But I also wanna trigger this automation if it actually changes to alarm. So I'll add another trigger here, same entity, Servo GX Inverter Overload Alarm, and the two I'll set to alarm. So either of these two states will trigger this automation. We're not gonna have any conditions in this automation, and so we'll skip down to the then do section. And we'll add a notification. So we add action, and we're gonna look for a notification. Depending on which devices you have set up, you can choose any of them here, or you can even set up a notification group. I'll link to some documentation down below for how to do that. For now, I'm just gonna choose my mobile app. So I'm gonna add a message that uses a variable here. We wanna use the state of a sensor as real-time data sent in this notification. Once you add ginger brackets like that, this action block is gonna to change to YAML mode. But don't worry, I'll show you how to set this up. 
So if we're using the state of our Servo GX AC consumption, we can inject that into the sentence and actually list the current draw at the moment that the notification was sent. Then I'm going to add a title. And again, I'm going to use a template so that we can insert the state of a sensor. And we're going to use the sensor that we used to trigger this automation. That's the Servo GX inverter overload alarm. And that'll put the text of that sensor into this title. So the inverter status will say either warning or alarm. Then I'm going to add some data attributes here. This configuration varies a little bit between iOS and Android, and I'm configuring this for iOS, but I will link to the documentation down below if you want to set this up for Android. By setting critical to one and the sound to default and the volume to one, which is the highest, we're going to make sure that this alert is received as a critical notification, even if we're in do not disturb. And that looks like this. We also use a text to speech system in the van so that we can have announcements played. So I also have an action in our automation here to push our alert to our alert notification system. And that sounds like this. There is an inverter overload warning. So add any other actions you want to the end of this action block anytime this automation is triggered and you now have an automation that sends you critical alerts anytime your inverter is in the warning or alarm state. Again, this requires that you're pulling that data from the servo and you can watch my other video about how to set that up if you haven't done so already. A link for that will be in the description below. To make sure you receive these notifications as local push notifications or regular notifications when you're away from your vehicle, you need to make sure you set up the app correctly. So let's take a look at the Home Assistant native app. I'm using iOS, but this should also apply to Android. So I'm gonna open the Home Assistant app and I'll hit the menu button, scroll down to settings. Then we'll go down to companion app and we'll choose our server. Assuming you already have this set up, you may see connected via internal URL at the top if you're on the same network as your server. And you'll see a couple rows down that local push is available. The key to this is making sure that under the details section, you have an internal URL set up. I'm using the IP address of our home assistant Raspberry Pi server inside the van. You can also use MDNS. So you might have something like homeassistant.local colon 8123, which is the port number. If you tap internal URL, you can configure Wi-Fi networks that tell Home Assistant to use the internal address whenever you're on these networks. Then enable local push and you'll receive local push notifications anytime you're on the same network as your Home Assistant server. I should note that obviously if you're away from the vehicle and the vehicle itself, your Home Assistant installed, doesn't have an internet connection, then there's no way it can get you push notifications. But if you're local to the vehicle and there's no internet, then you'll still get local push notifications if you have an internal URL set up correctly. All right, there we go. We now have an automation that's triggered anytime our inverter overload status says warning or alarm and sends a notification to our device using push notifications if we're locally connected to the server or regular notifications if we're connected externally to the server. Thanks again to The Wonderful for sponsoring this Smarty Bit episode and thanks as always to our members. If you wanna join up, click the join button down below for some cool perks or just to support the cause. And don't forget about the Discord server. If you need help solving a problem or just wanna hang out with some other nerds, the Discord link is in the description below. All right, until next time, safe travels.